Okay, well, it's the beginning of day three, and we hope to make some good strides on this project today. I'm pleased to say that I left the engine overnight on the stand, which I don't like doing, because I could not get the uh, brackets for the motor mounts installed in time yesterday, simply because of a miscalculation in fitting on uh, the rubber uh, bushings for the uh, motor mounts. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, but it did stay up and I didn't have anything settled, which is great news. Uh, checked on it last night and again in the morning and all as well. So that being said, um, what you saw in the time lapse that was basically at the ending of part two of day two was you saw me pulling the engine back out again after I was resetting it. So you actually saw me working to set it for the second time uh, and then pulling it out to make a, a modification before I set it back in. Now, the reason I pulled it after having told you in the video that I was done and then showing a time lapse where you see me setting it again and then pulling it and setting it again is as follows. I was crawling around down here thinking that I could put the rubber bushings in from underneath and can not. You can see where I've modified a little bit of the ear off the guard on that part that's right in the brightest part of the light right now down there below the exhaust or uh, below this pipe here, excuse me. And um, that got modified so that fit nicely. The underside I actually trimmed back a little bit too to try to slide this up from underneath and it just wasn't working. So uh, after realizing that just the right way to do this was to pull the engine, I pulled the engine back out, put the rubber bushings in and then as I was coming into place, I kept fouling on this really, really tight position here that you see there where the uh, accelerator linkage, is. you can actually see the scar marks I'm pointing, well, actually it's actually glowing back at us right now, the scar marks where it was just kind of rubbing up against that. And I didn't have that problem on the first time that I set the engine in place. So something was different. And sure enough, what it was was that the rubber was hitting on the bolts that you see on the side of the frame. There is just enough clearance for those to go in. And what that does is it renders that rubber on the inside there right up against the inside of the frame and right up against the bolts for bolt number two in the center here. Now let's talk about if that's really a problem or not. It's not. Um, yeah, you may want to think, oh, I got to pull that bolt out. When are you going to pull that bolt out? You're not going to. If you don't like this, you certainly could move up to the forward motor mount uh, option that's an option in these modifications. And, and Steve Parker offers you an option for how to do that uh, in his um, engine conversion process. In mine, where I'm using the original 300 TDI's motor mounts back here, I know that if I ever want to move this, I'm just going to redo these, re remove these three nuts, and the piece is going to come right off. So it's just, it's really just kind of a moot, moot issue. One thing I have to look at here is how close this is going to be to my air conditioning lines, and I'm not exactly in love with that, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. You can tell from one of my other videos I did modify this support out made a cut and a bend in order to get the AC piping to come through the floorboard. That's all in another video that you see a part one and part two of preparing this truck for the um, uh, process. And I'm looking here and it looks like I might be getting some new rubber because I think I just saw that that was dug in there. And that under here looks like it probably scarred on this as well, as well too. That's okay. Um, we'll take a look at that and see what uh, what little damage we've created in getting this in. Obviously the sharp edge right here didn't do anybody any favors and I might trim that back now just with a nice straight clean line. So anyway, um, we're going to now go down below and we're going to get on to the concept of what to do with these frame brackets. Now, what I know is as tight as that is up against the frame down there, this entire assembly is going to be too uh, deep. So I've got to look at what my options are. I think I'm probably going to go down and just see how much of this I have to cut off for this one to fit on this side and then prep for the weld. I know that this will run right down between two of those bolts nicely, but I also know that this bracket arm is going to have to be bent out in order to not foul the <coughs> shackles. And so not a big deal. Um, that'll just give that a 
a little bit of a different weld line and uh, bring it down at a slight angle. The other side, um, I'm actually sitting a little further away from the frame, and so I might have to modify the um, piece by actually not cutting quite so much off or, or leaving more. Like I might go ahead and um, cut the entire piece off and leave the wall here so that I get the extra eighth of an inch of thickness and, and see then if I have to shim or do more behind it in order to get that out, we're supposed to be before we do our welding, but we'll figure it out. And when I say shim, just, just bear with me. I know that's a weird thing to say, but um, uh, what I mean by that is building it out with three sixteenths piece of steel or, or something like that to get it further out. We'll just see how it is, how close it's gonna be, how tight it's gonna be, and we'll figure that out now. Um, so here we go, and um, time to get, time to okay, get away. Well, let me try to articulate what I was saying earlier a little bit better. And you see now how tight everything fits. You see here now where I talked about cutting off, there's just this extra little lip on the rubber that sticks out and it was fouling on the bolts as I was trying to get this through. And we see now basically how this is in place here. Let me get in a little bit better position so I can hold the camera better. And, um, if I hold up the part that I've cut off of the donor defender, you can see that that just isn't going to slide up. You can see where the bolt hole is, where the bolt are, are off by a good inch, and you also see the conflict here. So I've got my work cut out for modifications, and you can see here that, boy, that's just so much nicer out of the way, uh, but my downpipe would potentially pass just right, right next to that. So I'm gonna do a little research about the idea of cl clocking that, but I mean, I just don't have a whole lot of options because if I um, move that too much more to the back, then I'm gonna be conflicting with these bolts. So I think we're gonna leave the exhaust plan to develop as we look at the room we have left and whether we're gonna track it to the outside of the frame with some kind of modification later, but uh, for now, we're just gonna go ahead and focus on the fact that we've gotta get the um, uh, brackets here for the motor mounts installed. Um, the one regret I wish I had taken care of, and I was supposed to have done this, but uh, I got um, so busy yesterday, I just forgot. I didn't clean up the frame here and get it ready for welding, so I'm gonna come in here with a wire brush and uh, get to the areas that I can, as good as I can, and get this cleaned up and ready for uh, welding, because that's just way too dirty to take a weld. But um, first and foremost, we're going to modify this piece here by essentially cutting off uh, the inch or so that we need in order for this triangle to fit neatly and um, work for my motor mount. Okay, so the magic number that we wanted was for this hole to be three quarters of an inch off of the back wall and Got some cleaning up to do here on my lines, it looks like, but uh, <clears throat> I made my cut. And I am just inside of three quarters of an inch from the center of the hole out, and that's what I want because it gives me a little bit of a gap for the weld. Um, but um, we'll go test fit that now and see what kind of adjustments and reshaping I have to do to this piece here, uh, because I do believe that's gonna have to flare out. But in any event, I'll show you what it looks like once we've got it up and installed. Okay, so if you see what we've done here, is we've gotten in the laid down, I don't have a lift on this project, which I sorely miss my lift, but we're looking to get a new shop here, hopefully within the next couple of months, and that'll be all taken care of. But I have gotten this uh, piece in for the bracket, for the motor mount, and you can tell I've gotten this side where there's no obstruction taken care of and tacked in place. Up in front, let's see if I can hold this camera. What we're gonna end up doing is once I get the motor out of the way, or the engine out of the way, we'll, we'll do something that comes up over here and gets in front of the shackle and gives us uh, still some vertical stability rather than, I mean, I could S upwards, but then I'd be in the way of pulling the motor out. So we're gonna just come a little forward and come out. And that worked out really well. You can see what I did is I built a T and uh, and this side is going to be nice. And of course, this will be a lot easier to see once uh, we're from the top side. But the motor is resting nicely on um, what is a good start of a weld. And now over here, 
we have kind of the opposite. We're hanging out in outer space here. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do some angle iron of a good solid gauge, maybe 3 16ths or better, and we will angle out to connect to this. And again, we'll tack it in place, and then we will also deal with the fact, if you look here, I'm, I'm, I made a cut to be able to get into this position, but it's just uh, something I'm going to fine tune once I've got the engine out and I can get in there while I'm standing in this area. It'll be so much easier to get to with the grinder. But um, again, um, there are some options if I went with one of the kits that are out there, but I have all this material and I have the time, so I'm making my own. It's not going to be any less strong than the other things that are out there that you can buy. Uh, it's just a waste of material for me to not use what I have on hand. And I think when we're done, I'm actually going to have this looking very factory, which I'll be quite happy with. But in the meantime, I've got to do some modifying, and um, I'm going to get going on that. Okay, so now that we've got the mounts in, of course, the thing we have to take into consideration is it's never going to be quite so easy to get back in because the bolts that are now coming through, the engine has to be lifted out enough for those bolts to clear and for the whole engine to come forward. Now over here, I can tell we've got the clearance, which is fine to be able to do that. <clears throat> However, it is now time to realize that since the engine is exactly where we want it, the fact that I know if I try to, whoops, drop my flashlight, lift the engine, it's going to hit on the linkage for the fuel so I'm going to cut off that last little quarter inch right there that is going to clearly, when this part lifts, hit on this part. So I'm just going to make a slice right there, and then I have nothing that will impede this from coming in and out again. Okay, so we have gone ahead and um, undone the two bolts back here that, that I had holding everything in place. I've checked my tolerances for everything is, and everything looks really good. I'm looking for my flashlight. <clears throat> there it is. And I just made the cut. Let me get in here to where you can now see that this, when I lift straight up, will clear the uh, accelerator linkage. So um, if you see where my finger just was, that's what we're talking about. And it actually will clear with about an eighth of an inch of clearance, and that is great. Now, a couple things. <clears throat> um, maybe, you know, that could have been avoided in your engine swap if you had the engine just over another quarter of an inch. But remember, I can't do that with how I'm using my motor mounts because I'm already flush up against the bolts as close as I want to go over here. Also, the reason that I'm not doing one of the conversion kits is because I need the engine to sit at this height in order to have clearance. Um, if I used the alternative mount, basically if I used the motor mount off of the 10J that you see right there, and I brought it in, my understanding of how I think this would be is that it would sit there and it would sit a little bit too low. If anything, if it was set too low or any higher, I'd kind of be in trouble. So I like this position and my motor mounts are going to work. So at this point, what I have to do is I'm going to lift up to where I know that my bolts are now out of the motor mount down below, paying special attention not to come so high that I'm, you know, up into the bulkhead. And so just as I check the work here, bring the engine out, we'll bring the engine out one last time so I can weld those motor mounts, and then look to prime and paint. Okay, so we have made our custom motor mounts now, and obviously we use the original motor mount, weld that up to a T to the one leg, and the other leg we had to do our own to make room for the shackle, and I think that came out really, really nice, and that came out good. I'll switch over now. I'll turn it off first. I'll switch over now and I'll show you the other side. <laughs> now, over here on the uh, right-hand side, uh, we did another custom. Gotta get to where I can hold the camera here. Excuse me. Another custom motor mount, and uh, here it is. And again, we had to deal with the um, shackle, and we wanted to use parts of the original 110 mount, which we did but we had to mount it up and away from the frame a little further. And so we basically did kind of an S attachment 
where it is connected uh, at a 90 on the inside here towards the bulkhead and it's connected with a 90 as well on the front side however the 90 is inverted and it's connected at the top so again I think that came out real nice and the engine appears to be happy so I'll finish doing primer and then we'll do some black paint because in this case this frame is in I mean 95 percent great condition so I don't want to go ahead and do a full off and then clean and then de galvanize dip or powder coat at this point um, the, the frame is just in such good shape that we're going to go ahead and get this painted and uh, move on with the project okay so we'll look at this from the top and just give you a better view of it you might have noticed from where I was rolling around on the ground looking at it that I'd not yet drilled <clears throat> my third bolt hole and now I have <clears throat> likewise here's our other side and I'm realizing that what I should do is probably weld this bolt and washer in place so that you can get the nut off on the other side so that won't free spin on somebody uh, since that's going to be stuck behind the um, bushing for the motor mount but in any event we're at those kind of decision points right now and getting ready to um, lay the second coat of paint on and go from there okay so we've gotten our motor mounts painted let them dry we've gotten the clutch lubed up and ready to go and we at this point are Going to move forward with our um, Fender TDI flywheel and series clutch, which both are in good shape. So we're going All to right, so our, our drive plate or flywheel housing flange, no cussing, <laughs> oh, it's a land or cuss all you want, uh, are in at uh, 45 newton meters or 33 foot pounds of torque, so one, two, and six more is eight. And now we're going to get the flywheel. I should make a note that one of the things that I've done just to make sure that I don't have too much of a headache putting this down in is that I went ahead and you don't want to cut too deep because these bolts actually have um, a little extra length on them so that you don't bung up the threads when you're trying to seat this. Uh, but I went ahead and got up to where I could cut about 3 16ths of an inch off of this because every little bit is going to help for slotting this back in. All right, so your Fender TDI's flywheel is going to go back down at 107-ish foot-pounds of torque per bolt in a star pattern. We tricked the system by just putting in a bolt and a nice piece of, mm, what have I got there, a bit of 10 gauge wire or something like that, to, because they're, they're pretty strong. And I think we're ready and to now go we're doing clutch. our clutch. This is actually the series clutch onto the 300 TDI bell housing, uh, sorry, flywheel, and it's 34 foot-pounds, and we didn't have the right clutch tool. I've got one for a V8 300 TDI um, clutch, but we were able to get it dead center, uh, so we're good to go. Well, we have one 300 TDI engine inside of a series truck. All of my areas are fitting nicely. Um, as you're coming in, obviously I've come in kind of high because of your bulkhead bolts. And in this time, we did go ahead and hit the fuel filter, which actually I think I'm able to tighten. It just looks like we unscrewed it, which might be nice. I believe the fuel filter, <laughs> well, never mind. That's just rickety anyway. Um, I believe the fuel filter will be getting a new location anyway, but um, we're definitely at a point where we can safely call this a night and evaluate our clearance but the alternator is not hitting on the frame which I like a lot and what's interesting about this is I've heard you have to clock the turbo but this wing happens to already have this cut out now the problem is before I realized that I went ahead and my ready to clean up my bench for the weekend huh um, I don't know where we put it but oh so before we realized that there were some sharp edges, we went ahead and deturboed. <laughs> so we're going to have to look and see at the ductwork and piping. Obviously, this piece here um, would usually run across the back, and it's just awfully tight. So now that we start researching the cooling options and different kits that are out there to make this work, and we'll research that and let you know which one we're going with and what other mods we might have to do to make everything work. Um, one thing, I'll just keep this rolling. See if I've got one-handed strength here. 
and we have ourselves a general location of the radiator, which is sitting under that wing. This wing's just cattywampus. And what this tells me is, if this is the position, this was the big question, right? I promised you guys in the fourth video that we would decide if we were going to try to stay with the original grill or come on all the way up to the Defender grill. Here's my limitation. I can't come any further forward with this because of the manual steering. I could set this centered, which is how this is typically done, and then stagger this just slightly in front of it. But then I don't know if I barely, barely, barely have enough room for the um, air conditioning condenser over there and its fan. So right now the vote is that I think I'm going to leave myself all kinds of room and I'm just going to go with the uh, Defender front end, but we will leave that decision till I goof around here a little bit more and figure out what I like the best. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope uh, this has been helpful so far. Obviously, we're going to take this truck a lot further than this and we're going to get it running and we'll tell you how everything ducks and electrical and everything like that, but <clears throat> we can leave it like this for the weekend and have some family time. So, um, notice one last thing here. We had to remove the viscous fan to have enough room to do this. Um, very different with the clutch and everything in the way. We had nowhere near as much room as I did when I was doing it by myself. But um, when you're going to set it in with the flywheel housing on the back and the clutch, you, you, need, you, you don't have the ability to get it in here with the um, fan on very easily. I know right now you're saying challenge accepted, but remember, you're going to have a very close tolerance here that you have to watch out for, and here, <laughs> and we just took it off, so we recommend that.